So hello everyone and welcome to my talk which is called Tips and Tricks to Scale Elasticsearch for 1 million requests per minute and beyond. First I want to thank Vinted for giving me the opportunity on working on interesting technical challenges and I want to thank uh, Bernard Buzzwords for accepting my, my talk. So who am I? My name is Dennis Yotsas. I work for a company called Vinted whose mission is to make the second hand the first choice worldwide. I'm a staff engineer there that mostly overlooks the, the search features. I do have some online presence. I have my personal uh, website. I, I post something on Twitter. And I'm the author of a little search tool called Lucy Rep. Check uh, GitHub for that. Yes, so agenda for, for today's presentation is that I'll do a little introduction. And then I'll talk about the scale of Elasticsearch installation at Vinted a bit more that that was a bit more than a year ago. Then I'll talk about three, uh, let's say, optimization strategies. And then I'll uh, briefly describe what was the scale uh, a year later. And then at the end, we can, we can have a little discussion uh, if, if there is any. Yeah, so first, uh, Vinted and Elasticsearch. So as I mentioned before, Vinted is a second-hand clothing uh, marketplace. Uh, Vinted operates in more than 10 countries and it uh, has to support more than 10 languages because we mostly operate in Europe and Europe is rich for various languages. Uh, first installation of Elasticsearch at Vinted uh, was done in 2014 and the first version was 1.4.1. Uh, I checked this in our chef repository. Uh, and today I'm going to share you a couple of tips and tricks uh, how we uh, evolved our installation there. Yes, yeah, so let's begin with the scale as of January 2020. So at that time, uh, Elasticsearch was uh, at of version 5.8.6, which at that time was more or less at, at, at the end of, of life. Uh, this version was a little bit old because the upgrade that was uh, tried uh, so, some time ago to a newer Elasticsearch version failed miserably with that caused uh, some, some downtime. And it was kind of a, a hot topic there. So the Elasticsearch cluster was really big. We had a one main cluster that had around 420 data nodes. And each data node had uh, 14 CPUs and 64 gigabytes of RAM. All the installation was done on bare metal. At that time, uh, the search throughput was around 300 uh, requests per minute uh, during the peak hours. During the peak hours, I mean, I mean uh, during the evenings when people are browsing the website the most. At that time, we had about 160 million documents in our primary index. And that index was divided into four shards that had four replicas. And the 99th percentile of latency at that time during the peak hours was floating around 200 to 250 milliseconds. And uh, well, the, the, the cluster had some performance issues and the slow log, me, meaning the slow queries, uh, and slow queries are, we consider as the ones that uh, has latency of more than 100 milliseconds, uh, during the peak hours just skyrocketed. So, so it, we had some, some performance issues. Uh, from the company perspective, Elasticsearch installation was seen as a, as a business risk because, well, it, it, it was not coping with the, with the load. And most of the backend developers didn't want to touch it because it was complicated and, and brittle. Uh, and however, from the management, uh, the management expected that the usage of Vinted platform is going to at least double by October of, of the same year, meaning that uh, th there will be similar increase in usage of Elasticsearch and adding more servers to this one big, uh, Elasticsearch cluster was considered as a bad idea. And for, uh, on top of that, uh, the functionality on, on Elasticsearch just accumulated over the years, remember 2014, and it was pretty much uh, no clear oversight and no clear ownership at, at that time. And at that time, uh, site reliability engineers were responsible for, for keeping Elasticsearch operational. And I can give you a hint that uh, server restarts doesn't help all that much when Elasticsearch cluster is overloaded. So yeah, that was the situation in 2020. 
So just to give you a, a brief hint on, on how the, the performance looked like, uh, when I joined Vinted, I started to run a little performance experiments, which, which were all more or less just take some queries, replay them back into production and just see how it goes. And when I replayed a small batch of 10,000 queries during our Easy Tuesdays, Tuesdays are the, the easiest days at Vinted, uh, those 10,000 queries caused additional 4 million slow queries uh, ending up in the, in the slow query log. So, so that's, that uh, should uh, give you some fear if you see such numbers. And uh, yeah, so, so the performance was bad. Uh, the main uh, way how we measure the uh, performance experiments is by replaying the queries from the query log or the slow log, in that case with our little tool called CAT, which, is st which stands for Kafka Elasticsearch tool. We take, we, take the, we take the queries from the slow log, replay them into some target Elasticsearch cluster, and we store the responses in yet another Elasticsearch cluster for visualizations. Uh, as you can see from the image, uh, sometimes the replay involves uh, three Elasticsearch clusters, but also it can be easily done just on your laptop. So yeah, this is replay. Yeah, so let's go to, to our uh, exp experiments and lessons learned. So one of the easiest tricks uh, to do is to store your IDs as keywords in Elasticsearch. So when, when I'm talking uh, about uh, keywords as IDs, I mean, if you, you have your queries, your simple Boolean queries that has filters, and you're filtering uh, your documents on some attribute that has some IDs, there, for example, like here for a country ID that has countries two and four, uh, you can, you can uh, do this uh, optimization. So a little context here. Uh, Elasticsearch indices, uh, in, uh, in attempted Elasticsearch indices data from MySQL, which is primary data store. And if you want more details on that, you can check Vinted Engineering blog uh, for details. Uh, Another thing is that a common practice for Ruby on Rails applications, which Vinted backend is, is to create databases, database tables with primary keys as auto increment integers. And a little uh, quiz for, you, for all of you. Uh, which Elasticsearch data type would you use to store those integers from MySQL database? If your answer is integer, because why not? Uh, I hope that uh, during the next couple of slides, I'll show you that, that this answer is not always the correct one. Uh, so yeah, so uh, in 2016, there was a blog post on Elasticsearch uh, uh, website written by Michael McCandles about the evolution of numeric uh, range filters in Apache Lucene. So TLDR version of, of this blog post uh, says that uh, uh, before this uh, change in, in Lucene, integers were, were indexed in as padded string uh, terms, just regular strings. But after the change, the integers were indexed as block KD trees, so, so, so the data structure was changed. And the change in, in Lucene propagated into Elasticsearch from version 5.0. Uh, so the outcome was that numeric data types were optimized for range queries. However, numeric data types continued to support terms queries, so no, no functionality was broken there. Uh, however, from the Vinted, points of view, uh, this, this, uh, this change was that we, we use IDs, we don't use IDs for range queries. We use IDs for simple fil filters uh, with terms queries, as we've seen an example in the previous slide. And this optimized integer data type for vintage use case meant the degraded query latency. By how much? Uh, for, for our workload, when we, when we did the replay, we uh, seen the the decrease of 99th percentile of around 20 millisecond, which was a significantly uh, significant improvement to our to our latency. And since we are using around 10 of such fields, uh, up to 10 of such fields with every search uh, query, there this this meant a huge uh, uh, performance improvement for us. And the, the cool thing is that the required change was as simple as changing the index mappings and just remixing all the data uh, into, in, into Elasticsearch cluster and no query changes was required, so easy money. 
And to summarize this, this first lesson is that uh, uh, remember that uh, that Vinted started to use Elasticsearch uh, uh, at the time when it when it was okay to to, to index integers as uh, uh, IDs as integers. Uh, but after the upgrade to 5.0, IDs as integers silently became a performance issue. And, and this change that uh, break nothing uh, easily slipped under the radars of regular backend developers and then sometime later backfired badly. Uh, well, one of the outcomes was that uh, Elasticsearch, the developers thought that Elasticsearch is just a slow, slow database. So I highly recommend to try this optimization on your workloads and let me know how it goes. Yeah, so we are done with the first lesson. Then we can talk about uh, filtering on dates. Uh, yeah, so for example, what, uh, let first talk uh, about the date math. By date math, I mean, I mean queries where you have uh, uh, clauses such as now minus seven days. Uh, so from the developer's point of view, writing such a date uh, filter on, on date is just as, as simple as hard coding a string now minus seven D, and that's it. You're, you're done with the feature, and you can proceed with, with your uh, with your life. However, if most of the queries uh, uh, that uh, you're issuing in, in, requesting in, into Elasticsearch has this date math, the more queries you send to your cluster, the more CPU it requires to to handle them all. Because uh, remember that queries with date math cannot be cached, means that you are not leveraging Elasticsearch cache, and the cache is the primary reason why Elasticsearch can be so fast when uh, doing its job. So don't use date, date math uh, in your filters, and always write explicit timestamps in production workloads. Just, uh, of course, of course, I know that in Kibana, when you when you're just playing with your data, writing date math expressions is perfectly fine. Yes. So let's talk a, a bit more about date filtering, and let's, uh, for for example, let's talk about this uh, innocently looking uh, uh, filter where you just uh, query a range of documents that were created sometime before before this timestamp, which is the timestamp of today. So basically, to translate the query into human language, this query asks Elasticsearch to collect all the documents that are not newer than X timestamp. However, remember that Vinted uh, is uh, uh, running for more than 10 years already. And uh, starting from now to the beginning of, of Vinted uh, document collection, let's say you have uh, a volume of 10, 10 years of, of documents. And this filter might match around 99% of all your documents in your index, which is not a good filter. So what we can do about it? What if we re rewrite this uh, range filter into, into an invert, inverted clause where we are saying that don't take documents that are uh, created at sometime later than a timestamp? The same timestamp from the previous example. So once again, this uh, this Elasticsearch query asks to collect the documents that are not newer than X timestamp. And once again, uh, remember that uh, what if the timestamp of now and all all my documents are accumulated over the last ten years? Then with this rewritten filter, uh, the the rewritten filter would match only one percent of all the documents in your index, which I would say is a, a good filter because from Elasticsearch perspective, a more specific filter is a good filter. And a bonus uh, tip on for from Elasticsearch docs is that when you are filtering something on timestamp, you should round the date to, to the minutes or to hours or to days. It de depends on your use case. So back, back uh, to, to the date filtering example, when we tried the replayed the inverted uh, clause back into our production clusters, uh, we've seen the reduction of uh, latency at 
99th percentile by around 15%, which at that time translated into additional 10 milliseconds uh, decrease from the query latency. Yeah, and when, when we deployed uh, this, uh, this change into production, we've seen uh, a latency chart such as that one. As, and as you see that the latency goes on and on, and then the, the deployment, and then bam, the decrease in latency. Which when you, when you see uh, a chart like this, immediately you have like, yes, it's said, it's, we achieved something nice today. Yeah, so cool. So a little summary on filtering on dates. So remember, don't use date math in production because it invalidates caches. Uh, also, another lesson is that write your filter clauses on timestamps or any other data types for that matter in the way that it matches fewer documents. Yes, yeah, so this. So we did uh, before two lessons about uh, how to, uh, let's say, get quick wins from the Elasticsearch per performance point of view. And then uh, let's proceed with the third lesson, which uh, plays a bit more on uh, how to scale Elasticsearch uh, for 1 million and beyond on this beyond part. So our, uh, one of the strategies that, that we applied is that we create feature-focused indices. Yeah. And so a little context on those feature-focused indices. So most of the Elasticsearch installations start in, in the similar fashion. So you have uh, your collection of documents. It might be large. It might be growing fast. You usually store the, this, this collection in a one index, potentially with many shards, of course. And then the functionality, meaning the multiple query types uh, on that index just accumulates over time. You just add new fields uh, and, and so on. And it, it just happens that the same index starts to uh, uh, handle the workloads such as search, aggregations, counts, and, and so on. And uh, also it happens that when your search traffic increases, with such a setup, your latency also grows. So uh, when we were working on, on scaling Elasticsearch, we considered splitting the, the workload uh, into many clusters, but we decided not to do it because of operational complexity that it would bring. Remember that we had one big Elasticsearch cluster and Elasticsearch cluster should be, well, you know, elastic. <laughs> so it should accommodate, accommodate the increased workloads. So, so we had a, another idea how to, how to proceed from, from the situation described previously. So yes, we still have this one huge cluster, but what if we would index the same data multiple times, meaning that we just index the same data into an index, into, a, into two different indices basically, and then route uh, some query traffic of some, uh, of some type into that index see how it goes, if we can get something out of, out of such a setup, and if uh, we, we see it as a promising one, we can optimize this, uh, this uh, splitted workload uh, later and separately. So this should uh, uh, remind you some divide and conquer strategy. So for example, what we've done uh, while working uh, in, in this way. So we have a uh, uh, a query, uh, query type that uh, uh, handles uh, uh, workloads for, uh, let's say, give me the newest uh, items, newest uh, things in our catalog grouped by a favorite brand uh, of, of a user that were uploaded over the, the last week. So immediately that should uh, uh, somehow ring you a bell that it should be Elasticsearch the basic functionality of top hits aggregation. So the data shape, uh, meaning the, the data mappings in Elasticsearch cluster is exactly the same as with the, the original, the base index, because it was handling such a workload before. Uh, and, and yeah, so it was easy to split. And, uh, and one additional uh, thing that can be inferred from the requirement for such a workload is that only a recent data is really needed. Like this, this, uh, this aggregation happens only over the last week. 
So how, how, it, how it went? Uh, let's say you can evaluate uh, uh, such a change in, in multiple ways, but, but for example, let's take the Elasticsearch request cache point of view. So the request cache is a shard level request cache, shard level that caches the results locally on each shard. So basically when a shard that handles the search request sees a query that, that it just handled a second ago, Ah, it says, OK, I can uh, deliver the results straight from the cache without uh, doing all the complicated work. So the request cache is useful for uh, frequently used search requests, uh, for example, for aggregation queries, exactly the, the workload that we are trying to uh, work with. So when we did the split and we measured the request cache hit rate for this new specialized index, that the, the, the aggregations, the, the request cache hit ratio was somewhere around 42%. While the, the request cache of, a, of an index that was handling uh, many workloads there uh, was only 6%, meaning that uh, it, it increased somewhat seven times, which was a nice win. Of course, uh, two different workloads, two different query sets and, and so on, but still, we have a one very feature-focused index that handles uh, the workload easily and doesn't cause many troubles uh, uh, from the cluster-wide perspective. And yeah, so two different workloads and they are not interfering with each other, meaning that uh, we have big clusters and we have enough uh, data nodes to accommodate shards uh, uh, for, each in for each two indices uh, uh, separately. So that's one. And, and we have, uh, uh, like, as of now, it, we have five such uh, splits of, of, of query types, and we are planning to do even more, even more in the future. So a little summary on this uh, lesson learned about uh, feature focused indices. So if you have a large Elasticsearch cluster that seems somewhat underutilized, meaning it has enough capacity to do, to do such tricks as index the same data multiple times, I would advise you to proceed with, with uh, such, such a strategy. And, uh, and this, uh, this the strategy could be generalized uh, like uh, uh, divide and conquer by splitting the query traffic by a use case and then optimize this uh, identified use case uh, later on separately. So there are good things about, uh, uh, about, about such a strategy uh, because it's easy. First thing is that it's easy to prioritize. So you can uh, open up your query log if you, if you have one, uh, look at the query types that, 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 you, that you have, and then, which, and then by the sheer number of, of queries of, of a particular type, you can uh, prioritize the more queries, the more it makes sense to split it and optimize it and work on it. Uh, and another cool thing is that when you split uh, your index in, in such a way and you work with it in such a way, is that it's easier to measure the optimizations because the uh, well the the performance metrics that that Elasticsearch uh, give, gives you are not polluted by unrelated uh, queries to, to your index. However, there, there's also downsides uh, with such a strategy uh, and uh, the, the downside is that it, it requires more work, meaning that when you have so, a change in your, let's say, index mapping that uh, is kind of, uh, that you touch a common attribute, uh, means that all the indices that were split from this base index should be and must be re-indexed uh, more or less at the same time to accommodate uh, the new change. So it requires more work. But, but overall, uh, the, 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 the results are promising and the, the engineers that are on duty are happy about such a strategy because it, uh, it, it makes Elasticsearch operate as smooth as a Rolls Royce. Yeah, so congratulations. We are done with the lessons. And then let's proceed to the last part of, of our presentation, which is uh, let's talk about how Elasticsearch installation 
looks at Vinted uh, as, of, as of now. So as of now, we have uh, Elasticsearch of version 7.9.3. So we managed to, to do an upgrade from version 5 to version 7. And all of that, what was required, uh, ins now instead of having one huge node, monstrous node, I would say we have three uh, clusters uh, that are handling the, the, the same workload which all of the three clusters are still huge. <laughs> each, each of the cluster has around uh, 160 data nodes and each data node has 16 uh, dedicated CPUs with uh, 48 gigabytes of RAM and, this, and the installation is still uh, on bare metal. And on top of that, uh, we have three clusters, three big clusters. We have a fourth cluster, which is of similar size that we are using for offline experimentation. So, and if, uh, if needed, we can uh, use that uh, offline cluster for uh, additional capacity or performance testing and so on. So, uh, yeah. Uh, and as promised by management, the usage grew a lot. And during the peak hours, we have uh, around 1 million or 1,000 uh, re requests uh, per, per minute. And also our data set grew significantly. Now, instead of having 160 million, we have uh, uh, 360 million uh, documents that are being searched with, with every query. Free. And the P99 uh, latency during the, the peak uh, hours, it floats around 120, 150 milliseconds. And as for the timeouts, and for the timeout, we consider uh, requests that take uh, more than 500 milliseconds are negligible. It's just 0.03% uh, uh, of all the, the queries that, that, that we are having. Yeah, so that's, these are the numbers. And uh, from the organizational perspective, now we have a team of, uh, that is eight people strong and is responsible for making Elasticsearch operational. So, because uh, we learned from our past mistakes that you cannot just expect Elasticsearch to handle more, more workload, we do a capacity testing constantly and we test for uh, two times uh, uh, increase in query traffic uh, in terms of uh, both uh, like document count, the more uh, in, in the indices that we have to search in, and the query throughput. And from the from our engineering director perspective, uh, it's, Elasticsearch is seen as a system that can that can accommodate the growth that Vinted is uh, expecting or experiencing. Uh, so one one cool trick that uh, that we implemented is that uh, we test new functionality in terms of performance before deploying it into into Elasticsearch with the realistic data on on the clusters of uh, realistic uh, size and uh, we have a uh, I mentioned the team that uh, is is on duty meaning that the team knows uh, actually what workload workloads Elasticsearch is, is having how to uh, let's say solve operational issues not only by restarting the, the, the servers so yes that's the scale of of Elasticsearch installation at Vinted as of January 2021. Yeah, let's let's conclude uh, uh, my my presentation. So, if you have a question, is everything perfect now? I would say no, because we st we still have that have issues. One of the primary issues is that Elasticsearch is resource hungry, and if we want to maintain the the strict operational requirements that that we have, well, we have to have big big clusters. Uh, version upgrades are still uh, not not perfect, and uh, the good thing is that our offline cluster helps with that. We can uh, upgrade the offline cluster and and test if if it handles the workload. Also, the machine learning engineers are not uh, entirely happy with with Elasticsearch, despite that uh, uh, that they use the data from from Elasticsearch. Uh, however, they deploy their Re search uh, hits re-ranking models outside of Elasticsearch, which brings uh, operational complexity. Uh, we would like to have everything inside Elasticsearch because it would be less, less complicated. 
And one complaint from mostly from my side is that Elasticsearch default installation offers very few tools to, for search relevance work, meaning that we have to go somewhere else to find the, find the tools or write them ourselves. This one, and since we are, uh, I would say, a big users of, of Elasticsearch, we are the likely targets that would uh, catch the, the errors uh, or bugs in, in Elasticsearch. So from time to time, we, we report back uh, our findings. Yeah, that's that's that. Yeah, so that was all I had for you today. Thank you, thank you for listening, and uh, I I hope that that you you enjoyed the presentation and Berlin buzzwords in, in general. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, thanks for the talk. There uh, looks like we're just about on time, but like since there's no talk uh, after this, like. There's one question that's coming, like, so maybe we could go over that one. Uh, the question yeah, reads, let's, let's go thanks on. for the presentation. Do you get any search uh, rejections during peak times? And how do you cope with it? Like, do you set any auto scaling policies? Uh, yes, yes, good, good question, thanks. Uh, in terms of auto scaling policies, we have a uh, a limited opportunity to do that because we have uh, an installation on our bare metal. So we have to provision our clusters, uh, let's say half a year up front. So, so there is really no easy way to do uh, auto scaling. And in terms of rejections, um, well, uh, we, as of now, Elasticsearch is operating in such a way that that the most problems it causes is that when the request times out, we just retry it, and most of the time it uh, it succeeds, because we have enough uh, let's say metal to, to to handle the workload and we optimized stuff for query latency. So so re rejections as of now are not problem. However, uh, some time ago during the, the peak hours, our Elasticsearch cluster was on fire and there were some, some re rejections, but I hope <laughs> that, that we've solved uh, this, this problem and we have uh, more tricks to take out of our sleeves uh, to make the situation even better. Awesome. Uh, I haven't seen any... Okay, I see one more question coming, but before that, I'd like to just let everybody know that uh, there's like the spatial lounge that like a lot of folks are hanging out at. So like once we're done with this talk, uh, feel free to hang out there. Let me mm -hmm. read out. Uh, okay, looks like three more questions come came in. I'm gonna read them out one by one. <clears throat> so the first question there is in general, what is your sharding strategy for best performance or capacity? Uh, few big shards or multiple small primary shards? Uh, okay, so uh, about, about sharding. Uh, as I mentioned in, the, in, in my presentation, uh, a year ago we had a sharding strategy which, which was uh, uh, we had 84 primary shards with uh, four replicas. So we had many, many shards and we uh, at that time, it was kind of just add more shards and the query latency will not go up as our document uh, count increases. However, that this at some point stopped working because, well, you know, it, it, it's, it's a limited strategy. And as of now, we have um, a little, let's say, less shards, which is uh, 36. And uh, how we came up with, with, that, with that number. Uh, so we... As I mentioned, we have an, an offline cluster where we can just uh, uh, re replay or route the, the production traffic and see how it goes, meaning co collect metrics. So we tried multiple uh, sharding uh, st see strategies, having uh, less primary shards, more replicas, or having more primary shards and, uh, and less, less replicas, because we, we try to have as many shards for index as we have data nodes, so this is this is the, the 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 upper limit of how many shards in total we would like to have, 
And at, at that point in time, it, it seemed that 36 shards is just a sweet spot, that it does not create too much indexing overhead uh, on the cluster, and it handles the, the queries with a low latency. So that's that, that's that. And yes, so we have a couple of rules of thumb for, for our shards. Uh, when we are considering uh, now how, how many of shards should we have next month and we have like a rule of thumb that the shards should not have like more than 7 or 10 million of documents and then the shards should not be bigger than let's say 10 gigabytes. Awesome. Okay, uh, next question for you is you mentioned partitioning the index by types of query. Can you elaborate on what level these queries are different? Is it at the aggregation level? The kind of data do they access? Yeah, so, so we have, like I mentioned in the presentation, uh, we have uh, many splits of, of that index. Uh, one, one example I've, I've mentioned uh, in, the, in the presentation that, that we have just a regular full text search index, and then we have an index dedicated to handling basically one type of aggregations. However, we have uh, other splits. For example, the, the third split would be, would be uh, for handling the count queries. You know, that users can, for example, users can register a query. And then when they, uh, let's say, open Vinted app, after a couple of days, they want to know how many new items uh, they were uploaded during the the time of last couple of days. So, so for such workload, we also have a separate index. Also, we we split the the index by uh, like one index is for having the queries into Elasticsearch that has actually no text, and we changed the indexing structure completely. Instead of sharding, we created multiple indices, time based indices uh, to handle su such a workload, while a full text search is handled by uh, an index of the same structure, it's just the queries are different. And different in a very small way that it doesn't have a filter on or any uh, boost on text uh, matching. Yeah, so thank you for the question. All right. uh, looks like the questions are flowing in. So uh, if oh. you wish to answer them here, like, or if you want to hang out at the, uh, the channel like breakout room we can do that or i can read out the next couple of questions uh, oh we, we 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 can do questions now all right uh let's I'm happy. okay the next question is have you considered having one index per country would that increase the request cache hits yeah good good, good question thanks so we have a mixture of, of both. Uh, since, well, uh, Vinted uh, some time ago operated in such a way that it opened up a new, let's say, portal per country. So at that point in time, all the indices uh, per, per country, let's say, were separate, despite the fact that they were in the same cluster, but the indices were separate. However, the, the, the company moved to the direction that we want to let's say, join uh, the markets. Let's say, let's say the Germany can shop uh, from the, let's say, France or, and France from Germany. Basically, this is, this is the idea. And when you, when you think about how to accommodate such a workload that at the same time you have to search in both catalogs. So this means that the data should somehow get uh, close to, to, to each other, meaning, meaning uh, basically the same index. Uh, of course, we don't we don't have uh, like uh, all all the data in, in in one index. For example, we have splits uh, also by language. So the German data, German uh, items are in one index, French are in in second index. So so the TLDR version of of this of this long answer. We had such a setup, but due to business circumstances, we had to transition ourselves into, let's say, a combined index per, 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 per workload, not per country. Cool. And uh, 
last question coming in is how much indexing traffic do these clusters handle uh, roughly uh, good, good question thanks uh, so of course it, it fluctuates it depends on on the, on the let's say seasons or the weekday or the time but uh, but roughly it's uh, it's around uh, 5000 uh, updates per 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 second to, to our elasticsearch clusters and so so this is the the indexing of, let's say throughput and as you know all the additional replicas in elasticsearch cause additional indexing meaning that if you have more replicas the same data should be indexed multiple times so so this this let's say this indexing uh, volume and, and workload is uh, is, is 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 that one 